In this video, I want to share some of the useful but often overlooked features of DxO Photolab. For this demonstration, I'm using Photolab 7 and it's the Elite version. I also have DxO Viewpoint and DxO Film Pack software installed. These applications integrate closely with Photolab, so you may see features in my interface that you don't see in your own. An example of this are the Textures and Light Leak panels in the Effects tab. Both of these tools are from the DxO Film Pack software, so you won't see them unless you have that installed. Now let's look at the Photo Library module in Photolab. This is where we can select the folder that we want to work with. When we select a folder, any images found in the folder are then displayed. It's important to realise that only images compatible with Photolab will be shown. This means we only see JPEG, TIFF and DNG files that are in the folder. Unlike Adobe Lightroom, where you need to import files before they can be shown, Photolab displays the contents of the folder when you select it. It also shows the folder structure on the hard disk, so you don't need to import the folders. But this approach can make browsing a folder containing lots of images a little slow to load. This is because each file in the folder needs to be read, and a preview of the file must be rendered before it can be displayed. To improve the browsing performance, Photolab will cache these previews. Then the next time you browse this folder, the previews in the cache are then loaded and displayed quickly, without needing to render all the image files again. You can see and change the image cache size in the Photolab settings. Go to the Photolab menu on a Mac and choose the settings option. On a Windows PC you'll find the settings in the edit menu. When you see the setting dialog open, click the advanced icon to access the cache settings. If the image cache became corrupt for any reason, you can also clear it here. Currently, I have a single TIFF file in my image folder. A useful feature of Photolab is that I can create a virtual copy of this file to work with. If I right click on the image, I can see a pop-up menu where I can choose to create the virtual copy. When I select that, an exact copy of the image appears as a second thumbnail in the browser. Now notice we have a small icon to the left of the file name. The original image file has the letter M next to it. This indicates that the file is a master file that the virtual copy was created from. When we look at the virtual copy, we see the number 1 next to it. This tells us that this is the first virtual copy that was created from the master file. We can also see that the file name is the same as the master file, and it has the same metadata and attributes. What's important about the virtual copy is that it doesn't actually exist in the folder on the hard drive. The file only exists inside a photo lab. You can see this if I right click on the image folder and select to show the contents in the Mac Finder. When that opens, we see that we have a TIFF image file and something called a DOP file. The DOP file is a special instruction file where the changes I make to the image are stored. If I open this file now in my text editor, we can see all the information about the changes and metadata that I've applied to this image. For example, the colour label is purple, and it has a rating of 3 stars. Then below this we have all the settings applied to the image in the Photolab editor. Now even though I only have one file, because I have a virtual copy created from it, I can modify that independently from the master. For example, I could remove the star rating and change the colour label to red. I can also apply different editing adjustments to the virtual copy as to the master. This can be extremely useful for things like printing, where you might want to maintain a master file and then produce different versions to print at different sizes or on different papers. Something else that you may not realise is that in the photo library view, there is an image preview. All I need to do is click and drag the top part of the window panel and drag it down using my mouse. We now see the image preview in the main part of the screen, and the thumbnails are displayed at the bottom. In the preview area, we have several controls allowing us to do things like magnify the image. And if we've applied any adjustments, we can compare their effect with the original image, just like we can when we're editing. If you find the thumbnails are too large to fit in the available space, you can also use this slider at the top of that panel to resize them. Now let's open our virtual image in the Customize module, where we can edit it. 
Here we see the main preview image and a film strip at the bottom. The film strip allows us to switch and edit different images in the current folder. If we don't want to see the film strip, we can hide it by clicking and dragging it down. This maximizes the preview area for the image we're editing, but notice that the export options are now missing. If I click and drag up on the panel to show the film strip again, we see the export buttons and the knit collection button all attached to that panel. The knit collection button is only available when you have the DXO knit collection installed. It's in the export section because when you open one of the knit collection plugins, a copy of the image is exported to the folder on the hard drive. That copy is then edited in the knit collection and appears in the thumbnail strip so that we can select it and edit it further. When editing any of the images, including a virtual copy, we can check for shadow and highlight clipping. We do this using the two icons at the bottom of the histogram panel. If I turn on the highlight clipping, you can see the area around the sun is too bright and is clipping. But if I turn on the shadow clipping, we don't see any warnings. To show you what the shadow clipping warnings look like, I'll turn on the tone curve and move the black point over to the right. As I do this, it turns the darker pixels in the image to black, and we then see the clipping warning. I'll turn the clipping warning off now because there's two other types of clipping that I want to tell you about. To the top right of the histogram, we see two icons, the first of which displays a computer monitor. When I click this, it turns on the monitor gamut warning. This means that if images contain any colors that my monitor can't display correctly, we'll see those pixels highlighted in a warning color. Fortunately, this image doesn't contain any of these colors, so we don't see any warnings. The second of the two icons though is a color warning indicator, but at the moment it's disabled. If we want to use this indicator, we need to first use the soft proofing feature in Photolab. You'll find this at the bottom of the color control section of the interface. Notice that when I turn this on, the color warning indicator becomes available. Soft proofing is used for printing, but we can also use this module to check for any color profile to see if our image has colors that are out of gamut for that. Colors are said to be out of gamut when they don't fit inside a color space that's selected. For example, if I have the ICC profile dropdown set to display sRGB, I'm instructing Photolab that I want to see what this image looks like when converted to the sRGB color space. And because I have the soft proofing module now turned on, the warning indicator is also enabled. Now watch what happens when I click this icon. We see some of the pixels in the image highlighted in red. These are the pixels in the image that fall outside of the sRGB color space. This tells us that when this image is displayed on a device that can only display sRGB colors, these pixels can't be displayed. But to ensure something is displayed, what happens is that their color is changed to the nearest color inside sRGB. Being able to soft proof using different profiles like this can be extremely useful. If you want to know more about soft proofing images using Photolab, I'll include a link to another video in the YouTube video description for this one. Now, closely related to soft proofing is how colors are managed in Photolab when editing. At the top of the Photolab color tab, we see the working color space. This is currently set to DXO wide gamut. The color space determines the range of colors that can be displayed in an image. Watch this video next to learn more about how this works with different color rendering options. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you've found something useful in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you soon for another video.